Greetings, my name is Charles Butler, I am a Juju Charmer, and I am here to talk to you about Juju, which is a next generation service orchestration platform by Canonical. Now we're going to start off by getting all the buzzwords at you right off the bat. We're going to talk about scaling, we're going to talk about DevOps, and we're going to be talking about magic. The only reasonable thing about what I just said is actually magic, because Juju literally means magic or supernatural powers. Now, Juju allows you to configure, manage, scale, and orchestrate services in a given cloud environment. And what I mean by that is that it works with multiple cloud environments. We're going to focus on Amazon Web Services today, but it also works with HP Public Stack, Open Cloud, LXC Containers, Windows Azure, and if you're using Ubuntu Mask, you can even orchestrate bare metal machines. So, let's take a look at a live demo of how Juju is going to work for you using the Hortonworks Hadoop stack and how much time it's actually going to save you. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and quick start an environment. And what this is going to do is it's going to create my bootstrap node and go ahead and deploy the Juju GUI for me. At which time, whenever it completes, it will automatically launch a browser pointed to the Juju GUI, where I'm then free to take a bundle and drop that bundle on top of the GUI to deploy my services. And what's excellent about bundles is that it's just a YAML representation of the workload that I wish to deploy and all the services or charms that make up that workload uh, stack. And now I am going to drag a bundle on top of the GUI to deploy my services. Now the GUI is going to go ahead and accept the deployment request and what it's doing now is it's communicating with the bootstrap node and telling it, hey, I need to provision machines for these services and I want to deploy these specific charms. Now that we've started to see our services coming on and start being added to the GUI, we're going to wait for our deployment to complete. This will take anywhere from just a couple minutes to, you know, I've seen some complicated stacks take upwards to 10 to 15 minutes to spin up a machine and finish deploying. Alright, brilliant. Our services are now online. As you can see with the lines connecting each charm, that they have relationships between one another. And we're going to go ahead and inspect this service of the Yarn HDFS Master and see that it's got one running unit. If we look at our compute nodes, let's go ahead and scale this up to two. We're just going to anticipate a, a larger workload right off the bat. And you're going to see the status bar turn yellow, which means that it's spinning up another machine and getting ready to configure it to talk to the Yarn HDFS Master as soon as it comes online. Now, the brilliant part about this is that it took absolutely no effort from me. I just punched in two in the units, and now I'm going to take a look through the configuration settings. And as you can see here, that you can dynamically reconfigure your service on the fly using these configuration values. And once your service has been deployed, you're not strictly locked into running it a certain way. Juju is engineered to be dynamic and to respond to the environment based on the different relationships that you have, as you see here. And... Uh, based on the specific configuration that you have for the charm. So let's take a look at the Hortonworks distribution of Hadoop. They have a full data platform, including SQL, streaming, uh, MapReduce applications, and it's comprised of several different components. And if you take a look at their documentation, you'll see that they have rather expansive information that this would take you literally hours to read. Just going through a simple setup of Hadoop itself and getting the different services connected can be a long-winded process because there's several moving parts. And we've abstracted a lot of this information away for you in the charm and made it to where it's repeatable and configurable to you as the user so that way you can get started quickly and become a domain expert in using the Hortonworks Hadoop stack instead of being an expert in how to deploy the Hortonworks Hadoop stack. So as you can see here, we're just going through some of the, the very basic steps that you're going to have to go through repeatedly as you set up the Hortonworks Hadoop stack. There's several different tables to memorize of the different components when you're working with HDFS or Yarn. Uh, also, that changes whenever you introduce Pig into the, to the scenario or Scoop and Uzi. And you kind of have to know all these things in order to get started, whereas using the Juju Charm, all that's abstracted. It's provided for you, and you're getting the benefit of a community of expertise for anybody that contributes against this charm stack to get you started quickly. So I'm going to drop into a terminal now, and I'm going to show you a quick condensed print using Juju Print of all the different services that we have online. And what's brilliant with this is that I'm just going to Juju SSH into our 
HDFS node and we're going to take a look at the file system and we're going to add a user and we're going to validate that things are set up properly that I can actually interact with the system using this uh, very basic smoke test. So the command that we're going to run is juju ssh yarn hdfs master slash zero. The slash zero is important because it tells me to connect to the first service in the listing of the hdfs master stack. And I'm going to sue to an environment variable that we provide called hdfs user. And from here we're going to run the hdfs distributed file system make dir command. And we're going to tell it to make slash user slash ubuntu. And then we're going to chmod it. And we're going to ch own it. All right, brilliant. And it appears that we're done. So now we're going to exit out of the HDFS user account. And now we're going to run a MapReduce Terragen of 10,000 records. And we're going to save that in user Ubuntu Terragen out. And what you're going to see here is that it's actually generating 10,000 records for me, and this is being distributed across the two clients that we spun up earlier in the demo. All right, brilliant. And here's all of our output that it actually generated the Terragen. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and sort this Terragen. These are two great MapReduce tasks for us that we can use to validate that our HDFS file system is working properly and that we are able to perform MapReduce jobs against the Hortonworks Hadoop stack that is being dictated with a Yarn server. So we're going to run this example jar, we're going to tell it to TerraSort, and we want to sort the TerraGen out and we want to place it in TerraSort out. This job's going to start, we're going to see the MapReduce task start. And this is going to take another moment. All right, and there is our finished output. We see that all of the shuffle has been completed. And let's go ahead and remove our TerraSort output. All right, and with that having been successfully moved to the trash, we're ready to move on to the next portion of the demo. We're going to SSH to our Hive unit, and for those of you that don't know, Hive is a data warehousing solution for Hadoop. And I'd also like to illustrate that we are connected to the HDFS file system. So we're going to run a quick DFS admin report to validate that we are indeed connected and getting back all the statistics that we would expect to see from a remote unit connected to HDFS. Now there's also a Hive user installed on the system, which we're going to assume the role of, and then we're going to fire up the Hive console. Now that we're in the Hive console, we're going to execute a couple of SQL commands to show databases and create a couple of test tables. And once we've got a first table, let's go ahead and create a second. Let's do create table test two. And now let's show the tables in the system. So everything looks very straightforward and similar to all the SQL that you're familiar with, but what's interesting about this is from the Hive console, we can execute distributed file system commands on top of HDFS. So out of the box with this bundle, Hive is now connected to our Hadoop HDFS, and all of our information is being warehoused in HDFS and ready for MapReduce applications to consume it. So you'll notice that once we drop the table, we also see that it has removed it from the DFS listing. And when we run another list of the location that Hive stores its warehouse, we'll see that the test two table is now gone. To fetch quick start, sudo apt get install juju quick start. And this will give you a quick utility to rapidly bootstrap and create your environment. And to fetch the bundle that we displayed today, if you head over to jujucharms.com and in the search bar, type in Hadoop TAC Hive TAC MySQL, and look under the other listing, it will be the first one that comes up, at which time you can view the README and click Yes to Deploy and evaluate this bundle deployment in a non-cost incurring environment and inspect the configuration options and interact with the GUI a bit. So for more information, you can visit juju.ubuntu.com.
You can reach out over the mailing list at juju at lists.canonical.com, or you can join us and pound juju on irc.freenode.net. Thank you for your time.